Today we are considering a new frame I have bordered a flower motif with. The idea has occurred to me after I saw an interesting edge type. I will share the link. So I've decided trying to apply it both as an edge and a picture frame. This picture was the first one. It introduces Petrikovskaya painting. We have visited Petrikovka village in Dnipropetrovsk region the other day. The village is known for the masters of Petrikovskaya painting. I will tell you about it someday in detail. So far I've decided to use this picture as the one to frame for the tutorial. In Petrikovka the masters have shown us how to paint flowers and leaves correctly according to the laws of Petrikovska painting, and I felt like keeping this picture framed, so the tutorial has been born. As well I've tried some other flower motifs. Here are my favorite mellows, for example. So I'm going to tell you a few words about peculiarities concerned with weaving this frame a bit later. In order to weave a frame like this, I take a regular piece of cardboard, print a picture, I stuck it with the help of double-sided tape and dragon glue, so I've attached the tubes and stuck both halves of cardboard to each other. I attach the tubes rather close to each other. If you need particular numbers, the intervals between the tubes are a bit more than half an inch, which is about one and a half centimeters. The very first, the very first picture I framed like this has appealed to me. So inspired, I've started the second one, but it is where I've got disappointed. The colors of the tubes of the base and the working tubes are not contrast enough. So I like the way this picture looks much less than the previous one. When starting the third one with more contrast colors, I've realized that this is the zest of the frame. I mean that you have to use the tubes of contrast color. For this frame, I weave two rows in the technique of a regular two-tube rope at first. Just a regular two-tube rope. The third row is woven in the technique of a three-tube rope. So far I'm weaving a two-tube rope close by the cardboard picture. Weave two rows this way with moistened tubes of a light color. The working tubes are light, the tubes of the base are dark. Two rows have been woven. I add one more working tube and start weaving a rope with three tubes. Lead each working tube in front of two basic tubes behind one. We've got a separate tutorial on weaving these decorative borders. What's important here is weaving in such a way to avoid failures on the front side, so try your best lengthening the tubes on the wrong side. On two tubes, under one. I've hidden the point of connection. Continue. This is going to be a decorative border. There is a special purpose why to be wood. And continue this way up to the end of the row. After the row over three tube rope has been woven, we leave one of the tubes unengaged and weave five rows more with two tubes. This excessive tube is going to be cut neatly and thoroughly afterwards. So five more rows in the technique of a regular two tube row. So 
so I have woven five rows more. The starting point is marked with this tail. I'm going to cut it tight afterwards. Hide the tails from the wrong side. Finish weaving neatly. Like this. Now make sure everything is smooth and neat on the, round, on the front side. It is. That's all. The next step is moistening the basic tubes. They have to lie smoothly with no breaks. That's why I moisten them and then perform the following action. I look. Here is a loop under the tube of the base. But I don't lead this tube through this very loop, but through the next one instead. I soften the tube thoroughly, lead a knitting needle through, put it into the tube and the end of the tube is dry enough and lead the tube through carefully. Add one more tube. Place it next to the first one neatly. Now take the next tube but one and lead it through the next loop by one. Here is the next one. I pass it by and lead a knitting needle, needle through the following loop. The ends of the tubes have to be dry, because if you moisten the tube ends, it will be too hard to lead them through the loops. If you've noticed, I moistened this part. The tube tails have been left dry. Now I pass one loop by and lead a knitting needle through the following one. I take the last but one at first. And then I lead through the last one and place it next to it. And continue this way till all the working tubes are directed downward like this, towards the center of the picture. Pass by one tube, take the next one and so on. So the first stage is finished. We have led the working tubes through the decorative edge we woven beforehand. The next stage is up to your imagination. I propose you the following variety. The next stage is leading couples of pearls over the following pairs from left to right. This two row interval before the decorative border is getting filled with this banding. And this way up to the end of the row. At the same time, smoothen and tighten where needed. So I've reached the last couple, lead it through the first loop. Just the way we usually do. I can even do without a needing needle here. So this was the second stage. The third and the fourth one are going to be united in order to get a braid as a result. This technique is well known for you already. Lead the first pair of tubes. Place the next one onto it. Continue. To avoid bothering yourself with a knitting needle, just lead a pair downward. 
We have performed a braid in the same way while making an edge. Actually, it is the same braid like edge. One. Lead downward and press. Is the next one. Downward and press. As a result, we are framing the picture in a nice way like this. Once again. One. Lead top down and press. And this way up to the very end. Now I need to lead the pair of tubes through this loop. Follow the pattern. As for these tails, they have to be inserted here. The tubes are just as long as they have to be, but actually some of them could be even a bit longer. And the last one has to be led here according to the pattern. This last tail is to be glued because it is a bit too short. This one is too short as well, the rest of the tails have been long enough. As a result we've got a frame like this. The only thing left is cutting the excess of tails and treating the articles the way we usually do. Priming with school glue mixed with water. This is the way the frame looks when finished. The last thing left is varnishing it, after which it is going to become shiny. What else to add? Apart from a frame, you may as well use this pattern to decorate a cover for a casket. Or if performed vertically like here, it can be used as a decorative edge of an article. So let me wish you good luck and new creative ideas.